Okay, hi everyone, it's Mark again, and we're moving on and we're going to talk about a topic here that I uh, hope you find helpful. It's really common, so um, it hopefully will be useful. We're going to talk about the imaging approach to fibrosis. Fibrosis, part of the diffuse lung disease kind of spectrum. Um, the main objective is to go over the five main morphologic imaging patterns of fibrosis and talk about the importance of honeycombing in particular, because that one kind of signifies a particular disease. And understand when we start going into this chronic round glass that the uh, presence and extent of fibrosis significantly changes your differential. There are certain things that you wouldn't see in a chronic round glass with a lot of fibrosis or say, as opposed to if there was no fibrosis. So this is a kind of a key and when you approach a chronic ground glass process. So first of all, let's define it. What fibrosis, how's that different than scarring? Well, fibrosis refers to the connective tissue deposition and you know it's part of this normal healing. Um, it's usually seen as an organizing pathologic process. An example would be usual interstitial pneumonitis, um, NSIP, um, as opposed to scarring, which that's fibrosis too but that's fibrosis secondary to an injury. Say um, residua from a prior necrotizing pneumonia or infarct will leave a scar. It's fibrosis, but it's secondary to a prior injury. So the imaging evidence or imaging of fibrosis is five main morphologic appearances, chronic round glass opacity, irregular visceral pleura, reticular opacity, traction bronchiexis, and then honeycombing, okay? The honeycombing, by the way, is one of the most difficult. So it, it really is tricky and it's important. So the whole basis of fibrosis is when it occurs pathologically and histologically, there is a retraction, a volume loss, which then causes a distortion of that parenchymal anatomy. So it can manifest as a kind of a chronic ground glass process, but the ground glass really should have other evidence of fibrosis in it. Reticular, which is just means it's a net-like kind of thing, uh, lines that crisscross, okay, reticulation. Traction bronchiectasis is the pulling apart of the airways because of that surrounding parenchyma volume loss and retraction, it pulls it apart and makes it wider and that's called traction bronchiectasis. Nothing wrong with the airway, it's just the airway lives in a really bad neighborhood. Okay, so it's secondary to that. Irregular visceral pleura, which I find very helpful. The pleura should be nice and smooth, nice and smooth. When it starts looking spiculated, that's again, a sign of retraction. And last is the honeycombing, and one of the most important and very difficult. So these small cysts that are smack up against the pleura. So let's look at each of them. Chronic ground glass. The more imaging evidence of fibrosis within that ground glass tells us that the ground glass actually reflects fibrosis. So this person's got a lot of ground glass, but no imaging evidence of fibrosis, right? Visceral pleur is good, no traction. This, is, this isn't fibrosis, right? This represents alveolar prognosis in this case. This patient's got some ground glass, chronic, a little bit of irregular visceral pleura, traction. So it represents some fibrosis here. And then you get into this, which is like there's traction bronchiexis, irregular visceral pleura. You see that serrated, uh, serrated appearance, um, very diffuse. That's pretty much if you biopsy, it's going to be fibrosis, in this case, fibrotic NSIP. Okay. This patient has got ground glass and not a lot of imaging evidence for fibrosis was treated uh, with corticosteroids and a lot of it got improved, but some of it didn't go away. And the areas that didn't go away are these areas of ground glass with evidence of fibrosis within it, traction bronchiexis, irregular visceral pleura. So the more fibro evidence of fibrosis within the ground glass, the less likely it will improve with therapy. Okay. The irregular visceral pleura, one of my favorites, the pleura should be nice and sharp. Look at this serrated appearance, right? Another one here, a little bit of a serrated appearance here, scarring. And you can tell when you see this kind of serrated or irregular visceral pleura that the underlying parenchyma has evidence of fibrosis or scarring, but fibrosis, and it retracts and pulls the pleura. 
and it tugs it in and gives it that kind of little spiculated shape at various points. Okay, and that's the distortion. Reticulation is actually just lines, right? And they're intersecting and it, it's like a net or a web of intersecting lines. We don't tend to see those so-called curly or interlobular septation thickening normally because of the parenchyma gets so distorted, they get distorted too. So you see these crisscrossing lines often in the setting with the irregular visceral pleura and maybe associated traction bronchiectasis. Okay. So this is reticulation, another sign, morphologic sign of fibrosis. And uh, traction bronchiectasis, well, this can be seen with any real cause of scarring or fibrosis. Um, this patient has cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, it's con chronic consolidation, and you can see how the airways are being pulled apart. Same here, being pulled apart by the reticular opacities being pulled apart, traction bronchiectasis, a very good sign of underlying fibrosis. Again, it's not the airway problem that is the issue, it's the fact that the airways get pulled apart, okay? Now, um, traction bronchiectasis is almost always varicose in appearance because it has different attachments that get pulled apart, okay? And lastly, honeycombing, one of the most difficult. It's, the, it's three to 10 millimeter sort of spheres, cystic spaces that are thick in walls and they usually are next to one another. Now, the key thing here is that it has to be right up against the pleura. It has to be right up against the pleura. That, I cannot emphasize that. And it can be single file or it can be heaped up on one another. As honeycombing progresses, it starts in that subpleural, right up against the pleural area. And when it progresses, it progresses centrally. So it goes peripheral to central. So it is conceivable that you will find areas of honeycombing that will be single layer, because some people teach that it has to be on top of one another. It's a lot easier if it's on top of one another, but it does not have to be. It represents the advanced end stage lung disease fibrosis and is strongly associated with usual interstitial pneumonitis, which many people call idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It, in fact, it's one of the most specific findings for UIP, IPF. And that's why it's really important because if you mention it in your report, the people are gonna assume it's probably UIP and get treatment for that, even potentially without a biopsy. So you wanna be careful when looking at it. So again, look, are they right up against the pleura? Yes, they're heaped up. Yes, there's traction bronchiectasis, or regular visceral pleura, it's peripherally, yeah, that's UIP and honeycombing. This one gets a little bit more difficult. Is this honeycombing? Mm, yeah, I think it is. How sure am I? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm moderately sure. But it, you see, it's tough. And if I'm, and if I'm not sure, I'm, I'm probably not going to come down totally on UAP, although that one is, you can just tell by the distribution. Okay, uh, what does it look like uh, on the plain film? Well, reticulation and honeycombing looks like little uh, crisscrossing webs of lines forming these little ant-sized holes, okay? And that's what it, you see here. Again, honeycombing, this is cysts that are form these reticulations right up against the pleura peripherally. That's honeycombing, that's UIP, okay? And again, once you say it, people are gonna assume it's UIP. So this patient has fibrosis as well, right? This is cryptogenic organized pneumonia. And you can see the consolidation, but you have that sort of irregular visceral pleura. You've got the traction bronchiectasis and that architectural just is distorted. And architectural distortion is a displacement of the um, normal anatomy of the vessels and the bronchi. They get distorted and pulled right, is that retraction, and you can see that retraction occurring here, and that tells you it's chronic, and that there is evidence of fibrosis or scarring present. Another patient here with sarcoid, it's got that bronchovascular, there's lots of nodules, but take a look, you can see this retraction in architectural distortion here, even on a plain film, that tells you that there is stage four sarcoid, that yes, there is evidence here of fibrosis. One other very helpful sign of fibrosis or scarring are when the hilum are pulled up, kind of like old man's pants in Florida, right? 
pull up that belt, the hyla get pulled up. And that only really kind of occurs in the chronic setting. And this patient's got multiple pulmonary nodules, hyla retraction, scarring. And this, in this case, was silicosis. Oh. So take a look. Is there imaging evidence of fibrosis? Yes, your regular visceral pleura, for sure, reticulations, a little bit of ground glass with some fibrosis. Is there also honeycombing? You can take a look. These look like they're right up against the wall. Yeah, I think there's honeycombing. What does this patient have? They have usual interstitial pneumonitis or UIP. Is this patient have honeycombing? Because they have reticulation, ground glass, and you see these little kind of cystic areas. But take a close look at them. They are not up against the pleura. They are not up against the pleura. This is not honeycombing. This is not honeycombing, but it can be easily confused with it. So these were actually little cysts slash emphysema that were formed. This is honeycombing right up against the pleura. Remember, it's gotta be against the pleura. So summary, the five mean uh, morphologic appearances of fibrosis, ground glass opacity, especially with evidence of fibrosis within it, the reticulation, Traction, bronchiectasis, pulled apart, honeycombing, right up against the pleura, and the irregular visceral pleura sign, that little serrated appearance to the pleura. I hope you found that helpful as we move through the chronic ground glass differential. Thanks.